This is Ashley Carter, the head of global payroll um, uh, here in, based here in the UK. Uh, so good afternoon to our listeners in Asia PAC. Uh, good morning to those who've dialed in um, from uh, Europe. And I guess um, almost good night from anyone who, uh, who may be working the night shift in the Americas. So this is, uh, this is truly a, um, a global uh, webcast, even though we are doing three vari variations um, for uh, a regional theme in each. So if I could have the next slide, please, Izzy. Okay, so yes, yeah, so as I say, uh, I'm the head of uh, Global Polar Services in BDO. Uh, we provide an integrated service uh, on a truly global basis, 160, 170 countries. Uh, and our core objective is a consistently exceptional payroll. Um, but uh, as we had in our first, this is the third of three webinars, and in the first one, um, we, uh, we illustrated how BDO is so much more than just a consistently exceptional payroll, uh, and how as an expert accounting firm, uh, we can off offer all the complementary services that you might wish as an employer, that you might wish as an employee, but also um, as a corporate entity that uh, in many countries is a necessity for running a payroll. So that was uh, webinar number one in the spring in the, the calm before uh, the uh, COVID-19 and the lockdowns. Uh, in the middle of lockdown, we did a, uh, an analysis of how uh, resilience had been enabled by uh, the controls put in for SOCAR reporting and ISA 3402 auditing and how important that was uh, both to us as a supplier, but also to our clients. And so now in the third of three um, podcasts, uh, we're looking beyond the lockdown. Uh, so the vaccines um, uh, are certainly being released um, from test into, uh, into live uh, in the next few months uh, right across the world. And so we, uh, we need to make sure that firstly, we just pause very briefly and make sure we've learned all the lessons of lockdown. Um, and Izzy, if I can have the next slide. Um, what we're now doing is looking beyond. It's really, really important that we get our chins up, uh, look over the parapet into 2021 and beyond and think what will that mean for, for you, our clients, uh, for the wider community of, uh, of BDOs, friends and clients who take maybe other services and not just payroll. We're still very happy to talk to you about payroll. Um, and also uh, the large community of BDO network firms who are joining us um, on this um, podcast. So the um, so the focus um, is, as I say, uh, to make sure that we, uh, we look forward um, and looking forward has two dimensions. One is a global dimension um, where on one hand, everything has been so very similar around the world during, uh, during the uh, national res um, the responses to COVID and to lockdowns. Um, but actually it's the differences at the national basis that have made uh, the big, big impact. Uh, those differences sometimes can be very small, but they have to be expertly interpreted. So what I have with me today are global presenters. Um, so Neil uh, Pinches and Sharon Tayfield. Some of you may be uh, aware of their presence. They presented to the GPMI uh, and other global audiences. Um, but to, uh, to start us going today, I'd like to introduce Joseph Hong, who's the head of global payroll, uh, payroll services in Hong Kong. Uh, close colleague we've met on uh, many uh, conferences, Joseph. Uh, and Joseph is now going to take us through um, uh, the, uh, the response to, um, to COVID and lockdown in Hong Kong uh, and how he sees the future there. And then we will draw together uh, for a discussion will be led by Sharon and Neil. So if I can have the next slide. And um, that, um, that illustrates that uh, in, uh, in sequence. And so the next slide for Joseph. Joseph, you. It's all Thank you, Ashley. Hi, thank you, Ashley. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the BDO webinar. I guess we are all still under the straightest um, COVID-19 measures in our countries, which including social distancing uh, restrictions and lockdown. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought upon unprecedented challenges to the global economies. It is expected that the pandemic would trigger the deepest global recession since World War II. Uh, concurring the coronavirus and its aftermath will definitely be the, the greatest challenges across the globe in 2021 and beyond. Can you please next slide, please? Um, today, uh, I'm going to uh, 
um, deliver the uh, messages about the six contents as, as indicated in this slide. Uh, firstly, we go to the managing lockdown. Uh, I, I think I, I need to share with you uh, some of the backgrounds about the lockdown. Uh, can you please move another page? Yeah, thanks. Um, we all know that the initial wave of COVID-19 outbreak occurs in China. On January 23rd, 2020, the central government of China imposed a lockdown in Wuhan and further other 15 cities in Hebei province on January 24th in an effort to quarantine the center of the outbreak of coronavirus disease 2019. Many cities, districts and counties across mainland China implemented similar measures since the 1st of February. In Hong Kong, we also reported confirmed cases on January the 13th um, January the 23rd, and the government has immediately imposed disease prevention measures and arrangement, um, and also uh, which including the uh, social distancing restriction and uh, quarantine measures to restrict the travels between borders of Hong Kong, China, and Macau, and the airport as well to avoid imported cases. However, the government has has never been enacted strict lockdown so far. Um, to align with the measures implemented by the government, BDO Hong Kong has also reacted immediately in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we share these um, below factors that we have done. We invoked our BCP, the Business Continuity Plan, in response to the pandemic. We, in, we imposed preventive measure in the office to protect our employees and visitors by issuing and wearing mask guidelines on personal and office hygiene and forcing social distancing and travel restrictions for employees, web meetings with clients instead of the face to face meeting, etc. And we also created a column uh, which named the video response to the COVID 19 at Video Hong Kong website with updated news about the COVID 19. For instance, the Hong Kong government's measure to support individual and business to keep jobs and business going amidst the COVID-19 pandemic and other relevant articles. How did Video Hong Kong overcome those challenges? Actually, we informed our clients in details about our BCP disaster recovery arrange arrangements and new practices on payroll operations during the pandemic. We also commit our client in all our continuity of payroll operations without interruptions. Could you please move to the next page? Um, most of our clients have BCP in place and they don't uh, have too much trouble in rolling out uh, the BCP quickly for immediate arrangement during the pandemic. But actually our client just wanted to evaluate our BCP arrangement so as to confirm if we can just have the capacity to provide ongoing payroll services during the pandemic. And uh, we change our practice uh, to fulfill our commitment on the ongoing payroll services for clients. Our new practices, including uh, strategically disperse a payroll team across different locations to reduce the risk of cross infection. In case of workplace inaccessibility, our payroll team members can still work at home and we have already uh, equipped the payroll team members with extra laptops with VPN access to allow them to perform the routine payroll processes for clients at home uh, or at the BCP operational center at a different location, which is 15 kilometers away from our main office. And we also digitalized our payroll processing procedures and practices, which can cope with the working from home practice. Uh, we dedicated payroll and IT professionals who strive their best to provide clients with ongoing services without interruption during the pandemic. Next slide, please. Okay, um, uh, what is the challenges that we, we received during the pandemic? Actually, we received a lot of inquiries from our clients about our BCP arrangement, because actually our clients do not want us to stop the uh, payroll processing uh, during the emergency. 
but some also even required us to uh, complete the BCP questionnaires to know how, uh, how we can uh, uh, provide the non-stop payroll services. And they wanted me, they wanted me to provide some of them uh, with the uh, copies of relevant certifications. In some special cases, we, we receive a special request from clients for the alternative solution in order to keep paying employee during emergency. Um, they, we have considered kind of specific situation and make appropriate proposal so as to smooth out their operational issue. One of the real case was that um, our client's HR administrator was unable to return to the office uh, to provide us with the monthly payroll variation because the office has been closed down because of the lock, uh, lockdown. Um, we make a proposal to them uh, by preparing a simulated bank file with only the monthly basic salary to the employee for their online submission of the file to their banker um, so that the staff can still get paid with just the basic salary. And then uh, the client accepted our proposal and the payroll process has been done and payment uh, received by employee on time. Thereafter, our client then threw up the actual pay for employees in the, in the next pay run. Can you please? Yeah, um, we face challenges um, due to uh, legislative changes also due to the during the pandemic. Um, actually, the, the biggest challenge that we have experienced were the closing down of the government offices intermittently during the second and the third wave of the pandemic in July and March. We couldn't help clients to submit the signed original documents such as stocks, uh, tax return, MPF forms, uh, documents for application of Hong Kong um, visa application. Um, these are all need to be submitted in original to the government offices. Uh, but due to closing down, we cannot submit the documents uh, by the due dates. Also, um, the government had changed the, and updated the legislation and launched subsidy schemes to help business and individual um, uh, in February and April to releasing the first and the second round of the anti-epidemic fund for relief package uh, for certain sectors which business were seriously affected by the pan pandemic. And also the, the schemes are also help business to stay afloat, keep employees in employment, etc. cetera. Um, we, we offer these uh, solutions to clients uh, on the basis that uh, of these two legislative changes as we want to help clients to get through all these uh, challenges. Firstly, we help clients to prepare and submit documents for application uh, of extension of filing deadlines with the government authorities so that the clients would not be penalized due to the belated filing. Uh, luckily, the application were approved and extended filing due date were granted. Um, we also help the client to apply for the government subsidy under the employment support schemes through the designated online portal um, provided by the government. Uh, we understand that most of our clients they need the subsidy badly, uh, but they don't exactly know how to uh, or how to how to handle the procedures and requirement for such applications. Uh, with our assistance, the funds of subsidy were subsequently hit clients' bank account in August and October, respectively. Uh, we provide the above value-added services to clients as a strategy um, of client retention and expansion. Can you please move on to the next slide, please? Um, Hong Kong faced a very challenging situation. Uh, from the heavy hit from the COVID-19 amid a combination of internal and external factors, which included social unrest, ongoing China-US tensions, national security law enacted, geopolitical uncertainty, and global financial market volatility. Um, despite of these adverse factors, we still expected that Hong Kong will have a rapid picking up of economy in the post. Uh, COVID-19, a uh, business has to be innovative, resilient, and adaptive to the e-commerce technology as the traditional business model will no longer be sustainable. Uh, in long-term business strategy, innovation, courage, and determination are essential in anticipating the effective comeback 
in the post-pandemic economy. Could you please move on? Um, we, we firstly talk about innovation. Um, depending on the nature of the business, companies should undergo change by adopting innovative business models. Uh, for example, e-commerce technology to enable B2B, B2C shopping and buying environment by replacing the traditional sales and purchases transaction between enterprises and end consumers. Uh, secondly, to build solid relationship with crucial suppliers to ensure quality surprise and achieving goals uh, of both parties. Um, to adopt end-to-end -end supply chain management to facilitate the shift to e-commerce and to cope with the new demand supply and the delivery mechanism to ensure the greatest user experience. Um, lastly, the investing in latest internal and external technology to enable staff remote working capability to continue serving customers without any interruption. Uh, and also to hold online meeting with all stakeholders in time of travel restrictions. Uh, latest networking security system to safeguard stakeholders from cyber attack threats um, to replace the traditional contract agreements signing with the web signature by e-documents and e-signatures. We have already made significant investments to get ready for the post. COVID-19 economic recovery. Can you move on to a, another slide? Um, we now talk about courage and determination. Uh, business leaders need to be brave in thinking independently and be self-determined in making difficult decisions to improve the outcome. For instance, to develop new business strategy, to change the current one, to optimize the interests of all stakeholders of the company in crisis. I would like to share a real success story which showed the importance of react fast to overcome the crisis situation because of the business leaders' innovative thinking, courage, and determination. A Hong Kong investors investing in broadband services for commercial and individual users who had who also invested in production of TV programs and had bid for the te television broadcasting license with the government of Hong Kong, but unfortunately failed. He has made the difficult decision to survive by enforcing to establish an online TV broadcasting platform to broadcast his produced television programs to the audience. Riding on the experience as a broadband service provider and operating the online TV broadcasting platform, he further changed his, his business strategy to run an online shopping platform focusing on selling and delivery of consumer products to the local end consumers. During the pandemic, consumers are forced to shop online and as a result, his online shopping platform had resulted significant increment of sales as compared to the previous years. As the rent of the shops drops significantly during the pandemic, he has decided to expand his business by renting physical retail shops at various districts, shopping centers of Hong Kong to provide venue for physical shopping and good receive, good receiving services for end customers. Um, online shopping platforms plus the physical retail stores would definitely enhance the user shopping experience. Can you move please? Um, we have learned important lessons from the pandemic that we have to react fast in response to crisis and have to be determined in making difficult decisions to improve the outcome. Um, the policy makers of some countries have not reacted fast enough and determined to impose strict lockdown, which then caused waves of pandemic since March this year, as imported cases were not tracked were not tracked properly and asymptomatic carriers in the community were not isolated earlier so that the transmission chains cannot be cut as soon as possible. Uh, it seems that we had missed the best timing uh, to in eliminate the virus effectively and we have no choice but to, to be prepared to live with the virus in the near future 
until the effective vaccine is developed and widely applied. This prolongs the recovery of the global economies. Uh, BDO, as a professional firm, we learn from the COVID-19. Um, we have we consider that we have to force workforce workplace innovation and provide new services to cope with our clients. Um, new requirement due to the change of the business model, transformation, restructuring as needed for the future. And we continue to foresee a greater shift towards both functional and resource outsourcing as more companies of different sizes begins to re-engineer their hiring strategy and to execute retrenchment of employee in order to minimize the employment-related obligation and costs. Um, clients just need to maintain a, a core team for driving business strategies. Um, some of our clients would consider collaborating with our professional resources solution team for sharing resources and talent to suit their short to medium term professional resources requirement and also engage our payroll team to do the extra advisory services on the local statutory requirements when execution of redundancy of employees. Move on, please. As businesses of certain sectors shrank significantly during the pandemic, the CEO of many companies are looking to change their long-term business strategy by refocusing the workforce and free up the uh, resources prepared for the rapid comeback in the post-COVID-19. Uh, since February, uh, we have received a lot of inquiries from the non-payroll related clients looking for outsourcing of business process and HR outsourcing management services, uh, such as accounting and financial reporting, payroll and HR management, uh, company secretarial professional solution, uh, professional resources solution services, etc. Uh, we estimated that there have been at least 30% increment of the inquiry as compared with the same period before the pandemic. Uh, outsourcing the payroll task is the latest agile business strategy of many companies so that they can outs outsourcing vendors can support them when they grow, shrink, merge, demerge or expand the business into other countries. Next slide, please. Uh, BDO has developed a human capital management service, which refer to uh, consulting and outsourcing offerings uh, relating to people resource management. The BDO offerings vary by country and by office and may include payroll, tax, compliance, compensation, design and management, organizational design, equity, benefit, retirement, immigration, expatriate services, and proprietary compensation surveys, as well as the other areas. Uh, the HCM services should meet clients' increasing demand on total HR management solutions. Actually, Video Hong Kong has already offered some of, some of our HCM services in the form of brand business solutions to clients, which include business process outsourcing services and professional resources solution services. During the, during the pandemic, we also offer new remote workforce and resource outsourcing services to clients who don't want to hire permanent headcount. And we also adopted consultative approach by offering clients with customized professional services to suit the needs and goals. This is an award-winning business mo model of Video Hong Kong. Uh, in conclusion, we have to adapt to the new normal and we have to embrace the new opportunity amidst the challenges. We also need to be optimistic about the economic and business outlook in medium to long term, which will be improved when a viable coronavirus vaccine is introduced. Stay healthy and safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joseph. Thank um, you. It, your stories are very encouraging, but also it highlights the fact that we are one company operating around the world. 
So from my side, from the central team, I just applaud you for all the hard work that you did uh, during the months that have preceded this. So Thank you. Sir. You're welcome. So just to introduce myself, my name is Sharon Tayfield, and I'm responsible for the global payroll clients that operate uh, from the UK and that we manage across the world. Uh, Neil Pinch is going to be joining me and we're going to share a little bit of interaction as we move through the next few slides. I'm going to begin just to give you an overview of how my team um, in the UK, Mauritius and Belfast manage the clients that we currently have in our portfolio during this uh, very strange period that we faced. So our first priority obviously was to ensure that our team members could function remotely and we checked in to ensure that that was the case. The second priority for us was to reach out to each one of our local offices. And we would certainly have reached out to Joseph and his team, along with all the other uh, BDO offices around the world. And there were two um, main reasons for reaching out to them. The first was to ensure that their BCPs were up and operating. And the second was to get an update on changes that were happening around the globe in terms of legislation. That was quite important for us because we had a responsibility to our clients to feed back what was happening around the world, to keep the clients abreast of legislation, and also to give clients the opportunity, as Joseph has already alluded to, to avail of um, funds that the government had made available to businesses that are operating around the globe and are facing unprecedented economic um, hardship. There was also some countries which offered uh, a delay in making payments in terms of statutory contributions. And it was again important that we transferred that information back to our clients and enabled their leadership team to make decisions as to whether they were going to use uh, those delays or whether they were going to proceed as normal. So all in all, quite a logistic um, operation to get all of that information in place and to ensure that we could uh, disperse that information to our various clients in a timely fashion. Now, during the COVID period, that wasn't the only thing that we faced. There were some natural disasters that were thrown in just to keep us on our toes. And the first one that we encountered was in Ethiopia. So during the COVID period, there was actually political unrest in the country and the government turned off the internet for all uh, inhabitants of uh, Ethiopia. That meant that our BDO Ethiopia office had no access to internet and so could not function as normal. They did, however, manage to send us a message. And because of our BCP plans, we were able to still service our clients during that period. And when internet activity was restored to the country, um, our BDO office did a true up very similar to the situation that Joseph described in his um, presentation, where he was able to assist a client whose employee was not able to submit the payroll in time due to their personal circumstances. In Indonesia, we faced an earthquake. Fortunately, our BDO local team uh, was still able to continue to work remotely and none of their personal homes were affected. So again, we needed to advise our clients of the situation and whether there would be any knock-on effect, for example, banks not opening on time or whether they needed to make alternative arrangements. And the last little story I wanted to share with you regards our team in Mauritius. So if you are an existing client, you would perhaps be working with some of our team members in Mauritius. Mauritius serves our global clients and assists BDO UK um, to deliver payroll services around the world. Mauritius faced cyclone warnings during the COVID period. Again, our team was able to operate remotely during this time period and our BCP plans worked as expected. So those are some of the stories that I wanted to share around the world and how we reacted to it. So if you can move to the next slide, Izzy. Thank you. So what next? Well, there's been quite a bit of research has been done around the changing employment landscape around the world. And the UK is, is no different to anywhere else around the world. So in a recent survey conducted by the UK Institute of Directors, 74% of UK firms have indicated that they plan on maintaining increased work from home situations. 
50% of the largest UK employers have no plans to return all staff to the office full time in the near future. And that was from a BBC um, survey that was conducted. And then Cardiff and Southampton universities have conducted independent research and nine in 10 workers who've worked from home during lockdown would like to continue to do that in some form or another. And finally, the Gensler US work from home survey indicates that 56% of surveyed US workers want to continue to work at home at least part of the time. So if we move to the next slide, Izzy. So what does that mean for us um, in terms of global payroll? Well, those survey results bring some challenges, but also some opportunities as BDO is well placed to be able to service these. Companies that have employees um, that are working remotely need to consider various, uh, various situations. And I know that a lot of employees are facing situations such as an employee is asked if they can remain working from home in Germany as they quite like it there, what can they do about it? Another employer has asked if they hired an employee from the US, but that employee cannot move to the UK um, because of lockdown situations, is that okay? Uh, and another example is where 20 UK based employees are now working in various countries around the globe because they were visiting or on holiday or with family, what does the employer do about it? All of our employees um, or all of our, our clients are facing situations such as this. So how does or how can we help them? Well, there are some key considerations that need to be taken into consideration in making an informed decision. The first one is a permanent establishment. Does the employee's activities in that overseas country trigger a permanent establishment for the employer overseas? The second is around employment tax and payroll. So do you need to register overseas to operate tax and social security withholding if your employee is working in another country? And the third consideration in answering some of these questions is related to personal income tax. So does your globally remote employee have any personal income tax obligations overseas because of the fact that they are working remotely in another country? I believe that these three considerations are going to be utmost in the minds of most global employees or employers as they face the challenges that COVID-19 has brought to us. And this is where I think as a global organization, BDO is well-placed to be able to service these. Sharon, do you think um, employees and employers actually understand this? Because when we, we, when we went into COVID and we went into lockdown around the world, so much was talked about, you know, you can work where you are, you can work remotely. How do clients really get to understand the impact of this? It's a very good question, Neil. And I don't think employers nor employees really understand the impact of these um, situations. And I'm, I'm finding that on some of the um, sort of chat groups that I belong to with where global employees are representative, that this is utmost in the minds of most employees uh, and employers for that matter. So in, a lot of employers are tracking where their employees are, but I think it's an ideal opportunity for a company such as ourselves to be able to provide those employers uh, with the, the sort of the, the, the key considerations, the legislation around that so that they can make informed decisions, because I think that's what they need. They need to make an informed decision before they find that they're in a situation where they have to now um, establish, an, uh, establish uh, an activity overseas because an employee has been working overseas. There has been a lot of relaxation from governments around the world uh, regarding the number of days that people can work in the country before a permanent establishment is triggered. However, employers need to be aware of that legislation and they need to keep up to date before they find that they face a tax bill in a country which they did not expect to have a tax bill in. Thanks, John. 
You're welcome. So moving on to the next slide, Izzy. So as um, Ashley indicated at the beginning of this presentation, we have got uh, three presentations that we're going to be doing. This is the first one. We then have a further one, which is going to cover EMEA, and finally, a, a session that's going to cover the Americas. So what we've included on the next slides are some of the key takeaway points from our colleagues around the globe who are not present on this particular session. So Neil, would you like to speak to us about the points that we found out during our presentation or the presentation we are going to do um, with Mexico? Cool. So, so we heard from Joseph earlier, and Joseph talked about the, um, the you know, the, the focus on outsourcing, um, and one of the things that CSR was was talk will be talking about is, is very similar. So, um, you know, we've got companies which have internal payroll processes. We uh, they found that they were significantly more effective compared to those of outsourced their payroll. Um, you know, and they have a, companies with outsource got greater degree of resilience and are better placed to ensure compliance, reporting, and regular changes are implemented. Um, I think it's worth looking at some of our clients, um, Sharon, in thinking about how you know, they moved in terms of BCP. We've got some clients which have got a very, um, you know, very well-controlled, well well-listed um, um, BCP plan. We've got others who left it totally to, to BDO to manage for them. Um, you know, how do you think some of the companies have managed with their, with their BCPs this year? You're spot on, Neil. <laughs> we had some clients that had a very good BC plan, a BCP plan, um, but even if they did have a BCP plan, they had to make some little tweaks to that BCP plan, but at least they had a starting point. And we had other clients who came to us and were really um, very thankful for the support that we were, be, we were able to give them but also the fact that we could, in effect, lead them through this difficult period. And I think that, that our depth across the globe and also our ability to step in and to take up that responsibility has been appreciated by our clients. It's also given us the opportunity to look at how we can better support our clients, not only in the global payroll space, but in other parts of their business. So whilst we could take care of their global payroll, some of our clients had difficulties in other areas, which we've now been able to step in and support them with because of our understanding of their business and because of the fact that we have that global footprint. And I think one of the things that we did find was that um, you know, we had clients themselves who found um, the going into COVID very difficult. So whilst we were, were lucky in a way, but also the planning of our local teams, um, Joseph and China particularly, we had some of our local clients who were, folk, who were impacted by that and we were having to work with them to get some around some of their own issues in order to get the payroll out of the way. Correct. So people pay properly. Um, yeah. Okay. If we move on to the next slide, is he? So, in terms of Marjolein over in the Netherlands, um, you know, the key thing I think for Marjolein is around, is around um, adapt, being able to adapt. And again, something that Joseph talked about earlier and Cesar will talk about in terms of Mexico. Um, but it's really looking down and saying, actually, can the business move? How can we get the business to be, um, to operate? And how can we support them? You know, payroll management, particularly in terms of getting people paid. Um, you know, we have furlough, we have other things around it. And, um, and it's about being agile. We're back to, again, thinking about how we, as a you know, BDO, can support our clients and making and helping the, the business um, you know, lose reliance upon one or two key members of staff so they can continue to operate their business. I think it's important as well, Neil, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, that uh, clients actually um, come up with a worst case situation so I know that we've been involved in, in a very large client where we've got to the point of having a break glass situation. So the, the client has now come to the, to the realization that actually they need to be very well planned for something similar to this or something worse than this. And so we've come up with a plan of action if every single one of our BDO officers around the globe was not able to operate, what would we do? And I think that's a very good exercise to undertake for any client 
um, is what would happen to your business if all of your support teams were not available? How would you do that? I think one of the stats that's come out of this um, COVID-19 period, and I'm very much aware of the fact that many countries are going into round two of lockdown or are currently in round two of lockdown, is the fact that from a global payroll perspective, we can say that throughout this period, we have paid all of our clients, staff on time. And that has been very appreciated by our clients. That around the world, no matter what the team have faced, whether it's been a lack of internet access, whether it's been a cyclone, or whether it's been an earthquake, our BDO team members from around the world have risen to the occasion. They are truly global payroll heroes, in my opinion. And we've managed to do that. Um, and I think that is a winning story in itself. I think it is. And I think one of the things we need to go, going back to your first point, it's around working with the clients to understand their single point of failure. So yes, we've been working on the, the what, what we've been calling great glass in order to ensure that we can maintain payments to employees. And what that means is going back with the client and going through that, you know, the whole end-to-end -end process and saying, actually, where is that point of failure? So one of the key issues now is because we've got centralized payroll. Um, so you know, in terms of um, the way that the business operates is their data flow. So if we don't get the data from the client in the first place, how can we work out the payroll? So part of that great glass is to be able to go across the whole um, pay group, the whole countries and say, actually, what will we be paying our, our employees um, if we cannot do that? And then have that value broken down by country so we can go to specific payrolls, specific countries and say, OK, we've got an issue. This is what we're paying. And it's that planning now, which I think is really helping us, because what we just don't know, we've got the, um, the vaccines coming into play in the next two, three, four months. And that will have a big impact, hopefully, in terms of going back to the new normal. But one thing's proved to us, we can't be complacent. We just don't know what's around the corner. We don't know what's going to be happening. So you just need to be prepared and be able to manage that and work with the clients and make sure people get paid. Indeed. Yeah, I think the key to that is is the, the preparing up front and being prepared for all situations. And I think that's where we add our value because of the depth of our knowledge and because of our experience in working across the globe. I'm just looking to see if we've got any questions. We've got no questions. Um, so I think the opportunity here is just to, you know, maybe ask, ask Joseph. Hi, Joseph. Hi, Neil. Hi. So what would you think um, in terms of the what you're looking to do in the next couple of months? What is your key priority then, do you think, for the next two or three months before the vaccines come into play and for your clients? I'm sorry, can you repeat the questions? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it correctly. So what's your biggest priority, do you think, um, in terms of BDO Hong Kong to help your, help your clients over the next two to three months? Uh, in the next two to three months, actually, um, uh, Hong Kong is quite lucky because we, we are not having a strict lockdown. Uh, everything uh, can be uh, running smoothly and normal. But, but who knows, in the next two months, there may be the fourth wave of pandemic coming because there are winter time in Hong Kong. There are uh, some, some uh, rumors that the flu will come. Um, so I, I think the best scenario for us to, be, to get prepared is that um, everything has to be... Um, running uh, on a mobile basis, that means we can work from uh, anywhere, anytime uh, for our clients. And also the uh, digitalized um, process should have to be ready just in case of anything happened. Uh, we still can process the, the client's payroll on time and accurate. So the objective for our team uh, to, to strike our best to help clients payroll processing on time and accurately uh, and also uh, being the compliance uh, for the filing of all the statutory forms and documents on a uh, timely basis to the relevant authorities. These are um, our main objective because our, as the payroll service provider, we have to do this part on, on that um, obligations. So, so this is the whole team is, is, is try our best to do the best that we can do 
for our clients uh, during this past uh, over six months and to, to be going on before the effective uh, vaccine has been uh, uh, deployed to the society, to the community. Great is an important point, Neil, um, that Joseph just spoken about is the, the online filing. So there are some countries around the world that did not have online filing when we went into lockdown. There are some countries in Africa where you still needed to go and submit a paper document in person in that particular country. And I think one of the, the positives from COVID, if there can be any positives, the positive from COVID is it has sparked um, not only governments, but organizations into looking at how they can automate processes, how they can put in place solutions that people can access that remotely. So to your point, Joseph, of, you know, being in or ensuring that everybody can work remotely, governments around the world are doing the same thing. Governments are going, what can we do to ensure that if this continues for a longer period, um, mm. that organizations can still make filings, that organizations can still submit payments? Um, and even internally, we're doing that. So, Neil, you're involved uh, with a lot of innovation within BDO. So what are some of the things you're going to be looking at for in the next three months? Well, some of the things we're looking at now is about in terms of um, validations and checking and making sure the data is, you know, more controls around the data going in. Um, because one thing we're conscious of is, you know, making sure that we've got the teams in place, both globally and locally, to manage those payrolls. I mean, BDO itself is really looking to improve um, how it does filing. So they're working centrally um, on some of that, you know, not within our payroll team, but looking at how they can access government systems and can support them in the filing process. But for us, it is really around um, we need to improve our, we want to be able to improve our processes. We want first time passes. So the challenges of COVID, um, you know, all in place, we know the issues around there. But I think if we look over the last eight months, actually we've achieved better first time passes than we had at the beginning of the year. Correct. Correct. Most definitely, yeah. Yeah, um, actually I want to supplement a little bit. Uh, in, in Hong Kong, the government has not uh, completely um, launched the e-filing uh, uh, systems. For instance, tax forms some of the tax forms are still far, need to be filed in original. Uh, some of the other or, uh, government authorities still, still accepting the uh, original filing forms and documents, uh, which, which I think in the next uh, mid, middle of the year, there may be possible that um, the, uh, the government has launched the scheme called I am smart, which everyone would have a, um, a digitalized license that we can file everything online with the government authorities. And this could this could mean a uh, a really uh, more advanced e-filing arrangement. Currently, we just do it halfly and and halfly by papers. And that brings a good a good point as well. Thanks, David. So, Sharon, how do you work with your with our teams to make sure our clients get up to date information in terms of changes? I know the beginning of COVID, the changes were coming in thick and fast across a number of all our countries, and they're still coming in. But how do we maintain um, our information, our knowledge of those, and help our clients? One of the things that we we have in place, and we had this in place before COVID began, thankfully, is um, within our team we've got uh, country champions and country leads, and those team members have a responsibility to reach out to our various offices around the globe on a monthly basis. And there's two reasons that they reach out. The first is uh, to share the metrics, as Neil mentioned, um, gathering of metrics, not only on a client basis, but for us as an organization is key because it enables us to track progress. It also enables us to see where we need to provide extra support, be that to a client or be that to one of our local firms. Um, and the second is gathering the legislation. So those meetings were already happening before COVID and they are absolutely vital um, as we progress through COVID. So one of our team members would be reaching out to Joseph and his team and asking what is happening in terms of legislation, but also sharing um, the stats that we've gathered from across the clients so that Joseph and his team have got a clear picture of how they are performing um, as a team, but also any expectations from the client's perspective. So there's a lot of dialogue between our different teams. 
And I think as we look at our local teams as well, in terms of how they're supporting their clients and our clients, one of the things that did happen um, was that a number of countries were undertaking webinars such as these, weren't they, in terms of, and in English, not necessarily their local language, which we could invite our clients to, to understand some of the changes and really help them get to grips with it. Great. Um, just asking again, I haven't got any questions here, but if anyone's got any questions, put their hands up for a moment, otherwise um, we can um, pass over to Ashley. Neil, um, thank you for the handover. Uh, Sharon and Joseph, thank you very much for your presentations and all the preparation you put into it. But I think really rather more since um, in the overall scheme of things, that's the very least you've done. It, it has been, uh, I just love Sharon's phraseology of payroll heroes. Um, and there are so many payroll heroes out there, not just on the BDO side, uh, but also on our client side, because we know that payroll has been the most challenging service of all to keep going. Um, during this pandemic, during the lockdown, during all of the, uh, the turbulence that's gone with it. Um, and uh, the, the other good thing about, great thing about payroll is that uh, it's always clear what we need to do, which is to make sure people get paid. Well, there can be true ups if necessary or whatever, but people need to get paid on time. Uh, so, uh, so those are my um, uh, very clear messages that I took away, and I'm very grateful for those presentations. Thank you very much to the uh, people who dialed in, uh, literally from all over the world. We had um, a very, very late bird from, uh, from the Americas, quite a few from the MIR, uh, and a great uh, audience uh, from across the Asia Pac region. So thank you very, very much for joining our webinar. Uh, I know a lot of you are existing clients, and that's great. And please do contact uh, me, contact your, your regular client team. Um, or, um, and if you are not uh, a BDO uh, client at the moment, we would like to have a conversation. Uh, my details are there on the slides. Uh, we will be posting these slides on the internet in the next day or two along with the recording, and you're very, very welcome to make contact. So uh, at that point, um, I thank my uh, Izzy, who's, uh, who's mastered this whole show uh, for the presentation, and we will close down the webinar. Thank you.